Hello and welcome to today's lesson on radical expressions. This is part two of two videos that go over the topics in the standard 1.1b for Algebra 2 and then that lesson in Study Island called Radical Expressions. So if you're working in either of those places you want to make sure you watch both this video and the one before it. And just keep in mind our study tips that we you can pause, rewind, and fast forward, that you should be taking notes, and you can even pause at the beginning of a question so that you can work it out on your own and then use the video to check yourself. And as I said before, just make sure that you're keeping straight your rules for adding and subtracting in this lesson and multiplying and dividing. Um, they're a little bit different and that's the biggest mistake that students make is confusing the two rules. So just make sure you study them so that you can keep them straight. Um, I'm so I'm looking forward to today's lesson and let's go ahead and take some notes. Here are my notes for multiplying and dividing. Um, and what this is showing you here is when we were adding and subtracting, you didn't add or subtract what was underneath the square root. They just stayed the same. You didn't touch underneath the radical symbol. Here, though, you're going to multiply outside numbers with outside numbers and inside numbers with inside numbers. And then same with dividing. You'll divide numbers outside the radical symbol and you'll divide numbers inside the radical symbol. So let's look at some examples so that you can see what that looks like. And then I, we're also going to have to know what the our exponent rules. So the, these you've probably been learning from middle school. But if you are multiplying two terms with the same base, you add them. If you're dividing two terms with the same base, so the big part, you're going to subtract them. If you have a negative exponent, you're going to remove that negative exponent. If it's in the top of the fraction, just move it to the bottom. And if it's in the bottom of the fraction, just move it to the top. If you have a power being multiplied to a power, or you're going to multiply those because a power raised to a power is very powerful, so you multiply. And if you have an exponent outside of parentheses, you're going to distribute that exponent to each part. And then remember, anything raised to the zero exponent is always just one. So that's just a little bit mini review from middle school. And then just remember, if you have an exponent of one half, that's the same as taking the square root. And if you have an exponent of one third, that's the same as taking the cube root. And if you same for one fourth is the same as the fourth root and one fifth is the same as the fifth root. So looking at our first examples, we can start to make sense of some of these notes is we're going to go ahead and multiply these. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply outside numbers with outside numbers. Well here there's no outside number. It's an invisible one. So one times four is four. And then I'm going to multiply inside numbers. Eight times eight is 64. So I'm going to have the cube root of 64. And then I'm going to see if I can simplify this at all first. So the cube root of 64 is 4. And you can use a calculator to figure that out. And so I'm going to have 4 times 4, which is 16. So my final answer here is D. So this is the same deal. We just added some variables to it. We're going to outs multiply outside parts with outside parts. So 5x squared times 4 is 20x squared. And then the inside parts, 13 times 13 is the square root of 169. And then x to the 8th times x to the 20th is x to the 28th. I just add those exponents. And then I want to see if I can simplify underneath my radical symbol. The square root of 169 is just 13. And then I have that invisible index of 2, and 2 goes into 28 14 times with no remainder. So nothing's going to remain under the square root. So there's I'm, the radical's gone because I've completely simplified it. And I still have that 20x squared out front. And those are being multiplied. So 20 times 13 is 260. 
and x squared times x to the 14th is x to the 16th. I just add those exponents, and so my answer here is C. The first thing I'm going to do here is to remove my parentheses by distributing that fractional exponent. So that just means I'm going to take this 1 half and apply it to the 49, apply it to the x squared, and apply it to the y. So I'm going to have 49 to the 1 half power, and then 2 times 1 half is just 1. So it's going to be x to the first, but then I don't have to write that one, it's assumed. And then I'm going to have y to the 1 half power. And then I'm going to do the same with the 1 third. I'm going to apply it to the 8, the x to the 6, and the y to the 3 halves. So I'm going to have 8 to the 1 third, and then 6 times 1 third is 2. And if you're around short of multiplying your fractions there, you can use the calculator to check yourself. And then 3 halves to 1 third, that's going to be 3 6 which the 3 6 is going to simplify to 1 half. And then I'm going to look at the number part and see if I can actually take simplify that any further. So 49 to the 1 half, 1 half is the same as taking the square root. So that's going to be a 7. The square root of 49 is 7. And then I have the x to the y to the 1 half. And then the 1 third is the same as taking the cube root. And the cube root of 8 is 2. And then I have x to the squared y to the 1 half. And then, then I'm just going to finish the multiplication in that problem. So I'm going to multiply 7 times 2, which is 14. And then remember, this x has an invisible 1 exponent, so when I take x times x squared and add those exponents, that's going to be x cubed. And then I'm going to have I multiply the y's, y to the 1 half, y to the 1 half, 1 half plus 1 half is 1, so I have y to the 1, but once again, I don't have to write that 1. So my final answer there is letter C. So now we're looking at a division problem or a fraction with a square root or a radical. And the key part here you want to remember is you can your final answer can never have a square root in the denominator. So we're going to have to rationalize that denominator is what this is, process is called. And the way that you do that is you just take the radical part that's in the denominator here, so that's the square root of 37, and you multiply the top and bottom by that. That's called rationalizing the denominator. So here, 11's on the outside, 37's on the inside, so I can't multiply those numbers, so it's just 11 square root of 37 in the top. And then the square root of 37 times the square root of 37, that's the same as taking square root of 37 squared. In the square root symbol in the square, they're opposite operations, so they just cancel each other out. And I'm just left with a 37 in the denominator. And now there's no square root in the denominator, which was the whole process that we wanted to accomplish here. And so when you multiply two square roots that are exactly alike, that always you're always just left with what's left what's you're always just left with what's underneath the radical symbol. And then you always want to look, can I reduce the outside numbers and any inside numbers? So I just have outside numbers. Can I reduce 37, 11 over 37? You can't. So your answer here is just D. So now this is the fraction with a radical in the denominator but I have adding and subtracting in the top. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to break that into two different terms or two different fractions. And so that's going to look like the square root of 85 over the square root of 17 minus the square root of 34 over the square root of 17. 
And since I have square roots in both the top and the bottom, I'm going to see if I can simplify that at all. If Can I simplify 85 over 17 at all? 17 goes into 85 five times, so that's the same as the square root of 5. And then I want to see, can I simplify 34 over 17 at all? 17 goes into 34 twice. So that's the same as taking a squ the square root of 2. And now I'm going to see, can I actually subtract these? Well, I can't simplify 5 anymore. There's no perfect squares that divide into 5, and there's no perfect squares that divide into 2. And they're not matching underneath, so I can't go any further. So D is my final answer. So I went ahead and rewrote this one in fractional form, this division problem, because it helps me to see what it is I can reduce and what it is I can't reduce. Because um, a fraction bar just means division. So I'm going to look at my outside parts first. 57 over 19. 19 goes into 57 three times, so that reduces to 3. And then I don't have anything left to reduce here. So I'm just going to have the x squared stays in the top of the fraction. And then my 47 or my 14 over 7, that's going to reduce to a square root of 2. And then x to the 12th over x to the 8th, that still stays under the square root. But remember, you're, when you have a fraction and exponents, you subtract them. So that's x to the 4th. And then I'm not left with anything underneath the fraction, so that's just a 1 underneath there. So now I want to see if I can reduce this radical anymore. This 2 doesn't have any perfect squares that reduce into it, but I have that invisible index of 2, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So that means I can reduce the variable part. So I'm going to have the 3x squared still up front, and that square root of 2 stays underneath. But now, like I said, 2 goes into 4 twice with no remainder. So I'm going to have an x squared out front here with none left underneath the radical. And so now I just need to combine these x squareds. x squared times x squared is x to the 4th. So this is 3x to the 4th square root of 2. And that's my final answer which is letter B. So this one here has fractional exponents, and if I look, and then my answers are also in fractional exponents, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take the time to convert them unless I have to. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of the parentheses by taking, applying the 1 3rd exponent to the 8, the x to the 4th, and the y to the 3 halves, and the same with the 1 half, applying it to the x and the y. And so when I do that, I'm going to have 8 to the 1 3rd power. And then I'm going to take 4 times 1 3rd on the x. So that's going to be x to the 4 thirds. And once again, if fractions, you can always check those on your calculator. And then 3 halves times 1 3rd, that's going to be y to the 3 6. And then 3 over 6 is going to reduce to 1 half. And if you did that on the calculator, it would automatically reduce it for you. And then I have my divide. And then that's going to be x to the 1 half and then y to the 1 half. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this in fractional form so it's easier for me to see what it is that I can simplify with what. So I'm going to have 8 to the 1 third, x to the 4 thirds, and y to the 1 half in the numerator, and then x to the 1 half, y to the 1 half in the denominator. Okay, and then I'm just going to look, okay, um, 8, that's my only number. I can't simplify it with anything in the denominator, so it's just going to stay 8 to the 1 third. However, I do know that taking the 1 third is the same as taking the cube root, and the cube root of 8 is 2. And if you're, you can once again use the calculator to check you on that. And then you have x's here, and when they have same basis with the exponents you're going to subtract. So 4 thirds minus 1 half is x to the 5 sixths, which you can use a calculator to check yourself or you can work that out by hand. 
and the bigger parts in the bigger exponent was in the top so that stays in the top and then I have one half minus one half that's zero and so that one just cancels out and so then uh, this is my final answer I can't simplify it that anymore so my final answer is a thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something new